Good morning students. We are discussing on pavement design and highway construction. Our today's topic of prescription that is based on the rigid pavement design. In this lecture, we will talk on the factor that affect the pavement design and a stress analysis that has been done by Westergaards. So let's start the lecture with the first topic that is what are the different factors that affect the rigid pavement design? For the rigid pavement design, we have a few factors that is loading, properties of subgrade, properties of material, external conditions, different joints we are providing in the rigid pavement and the reinforcement that we add in the pavement structure. So these are the main leading factors that affect while you are designing the rigid pavements. So let's talk in detail for these factors. That first factor that affect is the loading. Well, if you talk about the loading, the first factor that consider that is wheel load repetition. The wheel load which determines the depth of the pavement required to ensure that the subgrade soil is not fed. Will configuration affect the stress distribution and the deflection within the pavement? Many commercial vehicles have dual rear wheels which ensure that the contact pressure is within the limit. The normal practice is to convert the dual wheel into an equivalent single wheel load so that the analysis can be done simpler. Okay. The next factor that is related to the loading that is how much pressure is coming on the pavement. How the tire pressure affect the pavement design. The tire pressure is a very important factor as it determines the contact area and also the contact pressure between the wheel and the pavement surface. Even though the shape of the contact area is elliptical, for the sake of simplicity, for the analysis purpose, a circular area is generally considered while you are analyzing the rigid pavement. Also, the location of the load is affect the pavement design. Major three positions of loading are considered for estimating the stress in a slab. And those are the interior loading, the edge loading and the corner loading. So talking about interior loading, interior loading produce the tensile stresses at the bottom of the slab while edge loading produces the tensile strain at the bottom of the slab that is parallel to the edge and another smaller tensile stress at the top of the slab at the right angle to the edge direction while corner loading produces the tensile stresses at the top of the slab that is parallel to the bisector of the corner angle. So this is how loading affect the pavement design. The major three things in the loading is considered the first that is the wheel load repetition, how much number of repetition is coming on the layer on the slab, second the tire pressure and the third one that is the location of the load where it get more stress okay after loading the second factor that is the property of the subgrade is directly affect the pavement design while talking about the subgrade strength and the properties the strength of the soil subgrade has an important bearing on the slab design if the soil has a uniform bearing power the design of pavement the design of that particular layer is very easily done the supporting power is generally measured by the plate bearing test so that you can get the 
property, the strength property of the separate layer by testing that material. Other properties of the subgrid which affect the pavement performance are its drainage characteristics and susceptibility to volumetric change with the changes in the temperature and the moisture content as well as the susceptibility to the frost action. Also, subbase provision affect the design of the pavement. It also add some strength to the subgrade. Okay, it is difficult to evaluate how much additional strength is provided by the subbase. So, as such, the provision of subbase, its specification and its thickness are arbitrarily and very from the organization so it may depend that for what purpose you are providing the sub base as well as from the organizational view from the structural view how and what amount of material you are providing to the sub base and how much thickness you are providing to the sub base that can vary from organizations the next is properties of material when the pavements are considered as the linear elastic material, the elastic modulus and the Poisson's ratio of subgrade and each of that component layer must be specified. If in case the elastic modulus of a material varies with the time of loading, then the resilient modulus which is an, which is an elastic modulus under the repeated load must be selected in accordance with a load duration corresponding to the vehicle speed. When a material is considered non-linear elastic, the constitutive equation that is relating to the resilient modulus to the state of the stress that must be provided. However, many of some materials or the material properties are used in viscoelastic models which are very complex and in the development stage nowadays. The next is external conditions. In the external condition, two major factors affect the pavement design, the rigid pavement design and that is the temperature and precipitation. Let's talk on the temperature. The effect of temperature on the Asphalt pavement is different from the concrete pavement. So, the temperature affects the resilient modulus of asphalt layer while it induces curling of the concrete slab. In the rigid pavement, due to the difference in the temperature, the top and the bottom of the slab, the temperature stresses or the frictional stresses are developed. While in flexible pavement, dynamic modulus of elastic concrete varies with the temperature. Here, the frost heave causes the differential settlement and the roughness to the pavement. Most detrimental effect of the frost that occurs during the spring that it break up period when the ice melt and the subgrade is starting in the saturated condition. Now, the precipitation from the rain and snow affects the quantity of surface water infiltrating into the subgrid and the depth of ground water table. The poor drainage may bring lack of the shear strength, pumping and the loss of support to the pavement. After external condition, joints and the reinforcement that we additionally provided provide in the rigid pavement. So, talking about the joints, the joints are needed for allowing for the expansion, contraction and warping of the slab because if such joints are not provided, there is a possibility of failure of pavement because of the rigidity of the concrete. The spacing and arrangement of joints govern the stresses induced in the slab. So, the joints are very crucial member 
when we are designing the pavement. Also, we are providing extra reinforcement and such reinforcement also affect the pavement design. The slab can be unreinforced or the reinforced. The amount of reinforcement in an important consideration of the design, the recent advances in the designing continuous reinforced concrete, the pavement have considerably changed the design methodology. Now we can easily design that amount of reinforcement we should provide for that particular rigid pavement. So these were all about the factor that affect the rigid pavement. Now next topic is the stress analysis by the waste guards. Waste guards have made some assumption while he was analyzing the stresses that induced in the rigid pavement. So such assumptions are the concrete slab should be is homogeneous and isotropic as well as it has uniform elastic property. Second assumption he made that the reaction of the subgrade is vertically only and it proportional to the deflection of the slab. Third assumption was the reaction of the subgrade at a particular point is equal to the modulus of subgrade reaction that multiplied by the deflection at that particular point. He also made an assumption that the slab is uniform in the thickness. The fifth assumption was the load in the interior and the corner side is circular in shape and edge loading is semicircular. Now with all this assumption, he concluded with a formula of stresses that at the interior, there uh, how much amount of stress induced at the corner and at the edge point, how much stress is developed. So as we say, he had, uh, he had made a theory on the pavement where he had selected three points. The first one, that is the interior point. The second one, that is the age point. And the third one, that was the corner point. Okay. And on those points, he had already assumed that the load is coming only and only in the vertical direction. Okay. Now, what he had derived the original equation for the stresses under the three critical loading condition those are fi is equal to 0.31625 p upon h square 4 log of l by b plus 1.693 with that also he has derived equation for the edge loading and the corner loading where Fi is equal to the tensile stress at the bottom of the slab due to interior loading. Same way, Fe is the tensile stress that acting uh, on the edge loading. And Fe is equal to the tensile stress at the bottom due to edge loading. And Fc is the stress due to the corner loading. Wherein in detail, here the P is nothing but the wheel load, small l is the radius of relative stiffness and its equa its formula to find out this radius of relative stiffness we have a formula that is mentioned over here also the small h is the slab thickness and small a is nothing but the radius of area of the contact of wheel with that small b is the radius of equivalent distribution of the pressure at the bottom of the slab and the formula for b is equals to 1.6 a square plus h square raised to 1 by 2 minus 0.675 into h so with all this we can also find out the stresses that acting on that particular pavement slab with assuming different different slab thickness so for the different slab thickness we can find out the exact criteria of the safe pavement design so with that i am concluding today's lecture i hope student you understand the topic thoroughly thank you so much for the kind attention
we'll see you in the next lecture